Hello everyone and welcome along to the latest edition of This Is Ibrooks. I'm joined by Kyle McLean and Adam Robertson the day after Rangers defeated Braga 3-1 on aggreg- on after extra time sorry, and 3-2 on aggregate to make it through to the semi-finals of the Europa League. Kyle, how are you doing and how does it sound to hear that Rangers are in the semi-finals of the Europa League? It's absolutely brilliant. You know, um, we were absolutely drained after that game last night. It took everything out of us, just the, the celebrations, the the extra time. and But it was, it's just magic. You know, thinking it's been what's happened to us was 2008. You know, we got to the last final, last 17 years. It is incredible to think that we've reached two European semi-finals in that span of time. I'll put, I'll put you up in your mask there. I think it's 14 years, just ah. 2008. But <laughs> yeah, you're on the spot. You're on the spot. I'll let you away with that one. Adam, <laughs> how, do you, how do you feel knowing that knowing that Rangers are in the yeah, Europa League semi final? Yeah, it's fantastic. It really is, and it was it was thoroughly thoroughly deserved. Like I said to you last night, I'm just glad they kept it simple and a, a nice sort of quiet evening at Ibrox, professionally <laughs> professionally done, <laughs> heaven forbid. But no, yeah, I think they, they just they deserve it. You know, I think that's the main takeaway from it. They played so well last night, and and we'll come on to sort of last week as, as well in terms of maybe why there was a bit of confidence going into last, <clears throat> excuse me, last night. But yeah, fantastic to be in the semi-finals, and hopefully they can go one better. Yeah, absolutely. I think, Adam, we'll stick with you. First of all, you kind of touched on on the first point we're going to discuss, um, and it's really around how we all felt heading into the game last night. Obviously, second leg, I don't think we really played particularly well at all in the, in the first leg away in Braga. We didn't really lay a glove on them, if we're being honest. But there seemed to be a bit of a an air of confidence around the Rangers fans. I don't know if it was naive confidence or if it was if it was grounded in something legitimate. But did you feel, is that how you felt heading into the game? I mean, to be completely honest, because of I was away last week and I only managed to catch the highlights and it, it did seem like they, they, there was definitely big opportunities to get in behind Braga. Um, and I mean, you could see that from the first minute. I mean, within five minutes, they could have been 2-0 up and it was the same ball down to sort of down to Kent or Barisic on the, on the left-hand side. Obviously, the fixture a few years ago was probably playing on folks' minds as well in terms of, you know, we've seen how Braga completely crumbled under the the Ibrox atmosphere a few years back. Um, so, yeah, it, it was maybe just a bit of, I don't know, <laughs> naive or just like one last kind of desperate bit of hope to keep them going. Obviously, it's been a strange few weeks with sort of what happened in the league and now this and obviously the Scottish Cup to come. So, yeah, I, I don't necessarily think it was misplaced confidence I don't think they played well last week but I, I did watching the highlights anyway think that they had the right idea Kyle one of the things Adam picked up on there was that straight from the off uh, last night Ibrooks, we were playing the ball over the top looking for Kent looking for, for Barisic um, there's clearly a tactic that Gio and the management team picked up from from the first leg was that something that you kind of noticed that Braga were were playing a high line in that first leg and that, that there were opportunities if we could get some pace and some good quality delivery in um, behind them yeah it was just for me last week it was it was a personnel that was playing Sakala wasn't the right man to be playing up front he didn't um, utilise a lot of those balls that were going over the top but it's obviously something we've worked on throughout the season when I mean, you go as far back as the the Hearts game when you look at you know that big long switching ball from the centre halves up, but yeah we used Barisic last night. I know again we talked about it was it coming in and with the Basse Barisic and it, Gio got it absolutely spot on. I suppose it depends what what Barisic turns up and we got we got full blown warrior Barisic last night. He was he was brilliant, but you know he started that game off with that. The, the goal with the, with the ball right over the top, right? It was a fantastic area right into Kent, just dropped it, they cut back and found Lundstrom, Lundstrom back again, and then Barisic involved again with a fantastic delivery. And, and um, for me, the, the, wee, um, the wee touch Aribo does, uh, he's not looking for anybody in particular, but he's just trying to keep the ball alive, just keeping it um, in, a, in a dangerous area. And then we've got Pav, you know, Captain Extraordinaire sliding in at the, the back post with a, with another great goal in, in Europe. Yeah, Adam, we couldn't have asked for a better start, really, could we? Um, I think Ibrox was obviously buzzing um, at, the, at the start of the game. We had the, the Tifo, um, 
the words make us dream um, from the from the Union Bears. I thought it was really well well done. I think in terms of how Rangers started the game, it was exactly how we wanted them to start. But at the same time, it's also how we saw them start the old firm game recently, and then they kind of tailed off from there. Were you confident that uh, we would push on from from that early goal? Yeah, I mean, I, th- I thought that. Um, I mean, obviously, it was the the perfect start. Um, yeah, the old firm is playing on your mind, but you know, you have to just kind of take that game for, for what it was. You know, it was a separate game. They can't, they can't just. I don't think it's a kind of thing that would become a symptom to sort of score a goal within two minutes and then concede five minutes later. I think that was a kind of it happened and it happened in the Celtic game, and they have to. They should have dealt with it better then. But I think. Last night, no, when they started like that, there was no reason to sort of believe they wouldn't go on. And also, I've, I've kind of said it before in the podcast that they just, you know, that they, they treat that competition as that competition. It exists in its own little bubble and there's no reason to, you know, they've beaten Dortmund, they've beaten Red Star and now they've beaten Braga. There's no reason to think about any other games that they've played domestically, really. I, I mean, aside from anything else, they're just, they're such different games nine times out of ten because teams don't come out and play. So... Yeah, I, when the first goal went in, and then the second, it took me about five minutes to realise that the what was should have been the second was not a goal because <laughs> I was I was on another podcast with with the radio and I seen it was two 0 and I was like, all right, good stuff. And then about five minutes later, I was like, oh, it's, it's still one 0 um, Yeah. So so yeah, but no, I, I had every confidence they would they would go on after the way they started. Yeah, I think from just touching on that that second goal, that was kind of the next point we're going to come on to. Kyle, uh, the game, we felt like it looked a wee bit harsh um, that it was given yeah. as a handball. We actually, we were up at the other end of the, the pitch, but we we actually felt perhaps it hit the hand of the Braga player rather than yeah. Barisic's hand um, at the time. Having seen it back, it does kind of brush his knuckles. It barely touches yeah. his hand. Um, I suppose by the letter of the law, it is a handball and lead up to a goal, so then it should be disallowed, but it did seem really harsh. Yeah, it, it, it was soft, but there's no complaints from me in that. VAR has been good to us in this tournament. I mean, what I liken that to was the, the penalty that uh, Dortmund conceded against us with, with the boy handballed in the box. It, it was a nothing thing, really, and you'd you be raging if it goes against you, but... It, it, VAR was correct it was used correctly and, and the goal shouldn't have stood albeit very softly fantastic finish by the way and another fantastic ball in the box um, it was a great header by Kamar Roof it was just really really unfortunate that it, it didn't stand Yeah and we, we continued to press and we were all over them really for that full first half completely controlling the game they were struggling to get out their own their own half at all any sort of possession um, in our half tended to be not even reaching the final third, which was which was ideal. I felt like we were set up in a good a good defensive shape, and we weren't really allowing them to come up for breath either. Which is we were which is something that we've we've tended to let teams back into games. I think this season in, in some occasions, but that wasn't something we did we did last last night and in the first half anyway. Um, Adam, coming coming to you, I think I'd have to say that's probably the best first half of football I've seen from us this season. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, there's, there's. Don't think there can be much debate about that. Really, it's hard to think of, of another game where they were so just completely and utterly dominant um, over a team who, you know, the previous week. I mean, I don't think Rangers were outplayed last week, but Braga obviously did create more chances than they did um, last night. I mean, I think their xG was something like zero point six eight, and that was at the end of the game. So I can only imagine what it was in the first half. Um, but yeah, just just didn't give them a a minute's peace and what, what, and it, but it also just shows how much you know you obviously the St Mirren game is a completely different game, but it does just so show how much confidence must play a part because I mean St Mirren were I mean St Mirren were grim, but it still shows that just going in with a four 0 win has obviously helped. Yeah, I think so, and I think obviously we saw with Barisic what a bit of confidence. Mm. And him can do um, in terms of his performance. I think if he'd been thrown in from the cold, basically into that game, I'm not quite sure we see the same the same Barisic that turned up last night. Um, as I said, we continued to dominate. We should have scored a second for the second time. Kamar Ruth, um, I think it's the the typical Rangers template corner. Tavs whipping the ball in. Joe Aribo flicking it on at the front post, and the striker 
So I'm with Alfredo Morelos moving in at the back post to just tap in. Tamar Roof somehow manages to um, to hit the crossbar. It doesn't go in, and I think I, I, I'm almost standing there thinking, I wonder if it's just not his not his night. He was getting all, in all the right positions, and he was um, and he was he was having the attempts at goal, but obviously the disallowed goal, and then and then missing that one from from close in. It was uh, Kyle. It was a bit of a it was a bit of a how do we put it? I think it was. I think it was a, a bit a bit of a shock to the system that Kamar Roof didn't score that one. Yeah, it, it was an absolute sitter. But you know, having watched it back, it, I think he sees it very very late. He's he, he's not quick enough to react to it. But you know, we've talked about it before. You know, I know you and I have been down and to see him when he was playing at Leeds. We we waxed lyrical about about how good Roof was. This this is his bread and butter. He, he should have scored it, but um, yeah, he was unfortunate to, to hit the bar, but. He made up for it later on in the half and later on in the game, to be fair. Absolutely. I, sorry, I was just going to say, I agree with Kyle there that it, seeing it, I remember when I watched it live, I was like, oh my days, how has he missed that? But then seeing it back, I think he, he hit it the right way because uh, I almost thought should he have really went low and went with his head? And then I thought, or could he have just, but I think he's gone for it the right way. I think it's just, it's very unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. But he was he proved pivotal again for us. Um, a long ball in between the centre halves, which is one of the areas we we seem to try and target. Calvin Bassey brings it out of defence, um, plays a raking pass in between the centre halves. Somehow, much to my amazement, anyway, in the stands, um, Kamar Rupp is then through on goal, nudging the <laughs> nudging the back um, penalty to Rangers and uh, a, a deserved red card, I think, Adam. Yeah, it, it looked like it. Yeah, I mean, it seemed pretty stonewall. He's he's through on goal, and uh, I think it was Ramsey running next to him, so he maybe would have even squared it to a sort of open goal. So yeah, I mean, it's just the same ball. It's kind of interesting though that Braga essentially haven't changed from because I remember when Rangers beat them one 0 in Portugal, the goal was I believe Hadji just played it over the top to yeah. Kent. So yeah. it's quite interesting that they've been through. I mean, Carvajal wasn't in charge back then, I don't believe no. so. To sort of go that length of time and still be getting caught by what is essentially the same plan is mm. not not great from their point of view, but obviously great for Rangers. Yeah, absolutely. Um, James Tavernier steps up. Um, there was obviously this the sense of how big a moment this was going to be in the game, Kyle. I think we we've obviously we saw him miss a penalty against Dundee, but he's swatted home so many others so far this season. High pressure situations. Were you confident he was going to score this one away? One away? I don't know. I'm never confident in penalties, regardless who's taking them, to be honest with you. I mean, you know, you sit next to me. I often sit on my peeking through my hands, uh, watching them. But in, I more often than not know people have scored by, <laughs> by the cheers. But um, yeah, it's when we, you know, at the game, I wasn't actually sure where he, where he put it. That that was the thing. I mean, ha- again, having watched it back now, uh, the keeper nearly got his uh, his foot to it, but it was it was a brilliant penalty again, right down the middle. It's just you've, you've always got a bit of oh, when it goes down the middle, but it obviously works for him, and, and and he's confident doing it. And and it was just ah, the noise when that that goal went in. It was just it was it just elevated. That that's the loudest I've heard Ibrox this season when that goal went in, just knowing that it was it was really, really on and, and it was all we deserved for, from that first half performance. It, if we were leading that four 0 there would have been no complaints. But I think two two 0 going into the second half, it was all it was all we deserved. Yeah, Adam, I'm going to come to you with two kind of separate questions here. Firstly, um two 0 up heading into half time against ten men got the lead in the tie as well as the, as well as the game itself must have been really confident head as we headed into to the second half and secondly just a, a word on James Tavernier um six six goals um in the Europa League so far this year all in the knockout phase I believe he's the he's the joint top goal scorer um in the competition at this stage um, and I think he's one of only two that are left in the competition that are still on the charts so he's got a real a real chance of the golden the golden boot for the Europa League. I don't know if that's a thing or not, but um, he's got a real chance of that top goal scorer accolade. It's quite incredible for a right back. Yeah, I mean, just on your first point, I I thought, you know, 10 men, surely they've kind of got this and then we'll sort of touch on what happened later. But it was, 
it was it ended up being quite an odd because it was probably the most dominant I've seen Rangers in Europe since sort of Europa League adventures began under Steven Gerrard a few years back. And yet at the same time it ended up being quite nervy. I mean they were more in control than they were against Dortmund or or Red Star. But no, I was I, I was confident um up until the corner that they had and they scored from that they were gonna get the the job done. Um but yeah, I mean on Tavernier it's hard to actually talk about him you run out of superlatives to describe the bloke I mean he's the best if I was to make a, a sort of all time 11 of Rangers players that I, based on what I've seen you know I'm 23 so I've kind of seen some really good teams and some not so good teams um, but I mean it would be him without a, a shadow of a doubt I mean just time and, and time again he, he steps up when he's most needed he drives the team on as I think you know a few years back there was questions over him defensively rightly so but he's answered them and yeah, I mean, there's there's not much else to say. I mean, he's a right back. It's ridiculous, really, the numbers that he produces. I know he's taking the penalties, but even so, you've still got to score them. And I mean, the first goals are. I mean, Kenny Miller was in BT Sport, like, and, and Ali McCoy. I mean, if they, you would expect them to score that. It's just, it's ridiculous. And yeah, he deserves everything that all the plaudits that that comes his way, and hopefully, he can be lifting it in a couple of months. Yeah, I don't think there can be any argument that he, that he fits into sort of Rangers Rangers legend status for me. Um, Kyle, one thing before we move on to the second half, I just wanted to touch on. I really liked how um, Geo and the management team were using Ryan Jack last night, almost as a yeah. as a defensive foil for James Tavernier to allow him to to push up. What were your thoughts on on where Jack was was sort of positioning himself, how he was picking up the ball, and how he was sort of impacting the team's play? Yeah, it was brilliant. Geo got the got it tactically spot on last night. It, it was really clever, you know. What he was doing was every time Tav was going forward, Jack was sort of occupying that right back position, just just covering for him, which was where we got a lot of our success from. A lot of the interlinking play came from it. I, I think a mention's got to go out to um, Lundstrom as well, um, who was almost doing a, a similar role um, on that left side at times. But um, yeah, the, the two of them were, were brilliant. Um, you know, I was shocked to, to see Jack coming off when he did, but. Yeah, he, he was superb last night and, and yeah, we got it spot on from the coaching staff. Yeah, so we've 2-0 up at half-time, 2-1 up on aggregate. Everything's looking swimming for Rangers, up against 10 men. All we, all we I think we were speaking in, in the stands, Kyle, but all we need to do is come out and keep up the tempo, get one more and kill the game off. I think we came out and kept the tempo up, if, I, if I'm honest. I think we, we, we didn't slacken off on that front, I think. The issue was actually just finding that finding that finishing touch. I think the best chance we had, we had several chances. I think there's too many chances to to list really throughout throughout the half. But um, another disallowed goal for Kamar Roof. Um, he, I think the ball was played over the top first time by Joe Aribo. Kamar Roof running through a deft flick over the over the goalkeeper into the back of net back of the net. Looks like it's it's three 0 but it's, it's ruled out for offside. Kyle it looked it looked a really tight one. Yeah, it, it was it was close, but but again, looking back on it, can't have any arguments with it. He was he was about a half yard offside, um, and and VAR was again implemented correctly. Uh, it was a great finish though. I thought it was a really really deft wee touch right over the keeper, um, just to take into the goal. But again, it was unfortunate that <laughs> that wasn't his first goal of the night, but. But yeah, it, VAR called it totally correct again. Yeah, Adam, we we continued to dominate, um, creating chances, just not finding the back of the net for the rest of the for the rest of the half up to about the 77th, 78th minute, I think, when uh, Gio van Bronckhorst made his first changes of the night. Uh, Ramsey and Jack coming off that seemed to unsettle the team a little bit, perhaps perhaps surprisingly from from my perspective. What were your thoughts at that stage? Yeah, they did start to look a little bit ragged. I wouldn't necessarily say that Braga started to dominate play by any stretch of the imagination, but there was a lot of there was a lot more second balls, maybe not being won or just just all got a bit scrappy. Um, but even so, that their goal is was not deserved. Well, you know, it wasn't coming in the way that you know it wasn't like Rangers sort of gave up and were pinned back. It was just you know they went up the pitch and, and earned a corner, and and sadly they've. They've scored from it due to some a bit of poor marking, I think. But yeah, you know, it's it's just one of them. You know, it's something they'll obviously have to just be wary of when they as they move forward. But 
yeah, they, they got there in the end. But they, they were completely dominating. Like you say, you know, the, the performance itself. And I mean, Roof is, a, is, mar- is so marginally offside. I completely agree. He is offside, obviously. That's, that's, you can't dispute that. But no, the, the performance was brilliant. Even Ramsey's chance of seeing that back, I don't know if he could. Yeah, I don't think that, that, I don't think that was a foul. I, I, no, he could have taken it better, but I don't think it was a foul either. I think the goalkeeper I, did very well to. to yeah, uh, dupe the I think his momentum just sort of. I mean, he's running full tilt at the ball, so he's not going to just stop as soon as he hits the ball. So, yeah, I don't know. It's one of those where the keepers always tend to get the benefit of the doubt, maybe where they shouldn't. You often see it at corners when big sort of, you know, everyone's entitled <laughs> to jump for the ball. But I think he's maybe maybe got away with it a wee bit there, but luckily it didn't matter in the end. Yeah, Kyle, Adam's touched on the Braga goal there. I think it's, it's a goal we've seen numerous times this season. It's a goal we've lamented on this podcast numerous times this season. I think it was it was scrappy play, scrappy defending from ourselves, and in, in the yeah. build up there was four or five occasions where the ball could have been cleared before it even gets to be in a corner, and um, ball eventually goes out for a corner, and all of a sudden you do sense the nervousness and and the stadium is I don't know if it transfers onto the players or the players are all is transferring from the players to the fans, but there's a there's a, a real sense of nervousness at that point, and it just the goal kind of came out of nowhere. I think it was a first shot on target if I if I remember correctly how how disappointing was that at that time in the game and how how did you feel at that stage <laughs> you know <laughs> it, <laughs> it put me the next 40 minutes for me were, were not enjoyable after that I, I had the jitters a wee bit but um, it's just we've, as you said we've seen this goal multiple times this season it's so frustrating watching it back because there's multiple opportunities to, 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 to clear the ball away and, and to deal with the danger and we just we just didn't deal with that. Even even if you look at the, the corner that they got as well, I mean it, it was a it was a great delivery. Um but could we be doing better in that corner? I just felt that the, the boy that scored that there was there was nobody really round about him. Sort of Golden made a sort of half chance. I think I think Kamar Roof was actually marking him, which I'd be maybe querying that because he, he looked about two foot taller than Kamar Roof when when he put it in the box. But yeah, you know the, the main thing for me after that was is that the heads didn't go down for us. I mean, right up until ninety five minutes was it? You know we were still attacking. Ryan Kent was still putting the ball in the box. Um, and and that was it. And you know, I'm sure I'm sure we'll go on to talk about the extra time. But uh, yeah, it was a really disappointing goal to lose, a kick in the stones. <laughs> yeah, Adam, like, like Kyle says, it could be a bit of a sucker punch at that stage of a game where you've dominated and you had two goals disallowed and you've missed umpteen sitters and you know that sort of stuff. It can be a bit of sucker punch when you you lose your lead in the tie at, at, at that stage. I thought we did well to to react quickly to that and continue to play. Play our game. Yeah, I completely agree. Second, everything Kyle sort of said there. That if you were, if you'd been watching that game and you and you didn't see the sort of score, you, you would barely believe it because they just just came out of nothing and Rangers just carried on playing the way they were playing. Um, I think everyone was probably desperate for them just to nick it in the the dying kind of minutes there, um, which would have been no more than they deserved. But yeah, I think. Probably could you know we could look back in a few months. It could be quite a big step because their heads have gone down. I think particularly domestically, their heads have have gone down at times. Um, the old firm being a sort of prime example, really. Um, but yeah, that there's they just they just kept going, and that's that's testament to the the team, really. Yeah, as as we said, obviously finished the game after ninety minutes. Finished two one to Rangers, two each on aggregate, which meant extra time. Absolutely not what any Rangers fan was wanting from a nervous perspective, but also from a looking ahead to the Scottish Cup semi-final at the weekend with the quick turnaround. Um, but we came out in the second half. We have to remember we were against 10 men at that stage as well, so they were going to tire. They were really struggling for much of the second half outside of the goal that they scored to get up the pitch at all. So it was really all on us to to take the onus of the game to them and we've, we're experienced in doing that um, in the league but obviously we're varying I think it's safe to say varying levels of success um, so Kyle I think it was it was heartening to score the the goal or the next goal um, as early as we did in extra time it kind of it definitely settled me down yeah it was 
at the time, I know we were driving back, I could not remember that <laughs> school at all. It was just all a bit of a, a blur to me. But, you know, looking back on it, 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 it was a brilliant goal. It, what makes that is, is the ball from Kamara to Aribo for me. I mean, that is just such a clever, clever ball and, and a really, really dangerous area that, you know, I think I can imagine the two of them in, in training just, you know, mucking about and, and playing those sort, sorts of passes in the wee five-a-side games that, that Gio does. Um, and, and, and it was really great. The, the speed of the ball as well from, from a rebo across the front, you know, I, I don't even think he took a touch. I think he just hit it first time right across yeah. the, the face yeah, of the goal. And, and it was just, it was into an area that I feel like a broken record. That if you put the ball in an area that's dangerous, when Kamar roofs in the box, he will make chances. And, 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 and for me, it was, it was the best goal of the three out of the night. And just, and, and again, I thought Ibrox was loud in the first goal. It was... Tonto and that eh? <laughs> when that one went in there was limbs, what was dentures and bones <laughs> and and all sorts flying about and 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 that when that happened. So yeah, it was just it was really really great to get that goal and and, and again no more than we deserved at that point. Yeah, Adam, I don't think it was any more than Kamar Roof deserved as well for his performance. I think that was potentially his best performance for us in the Rangers shirt so far. Yeah, yeah, I think so. It's hard to to pick out another one. He was absolutely outstanding, not just. Not just his work on the ball, obviously, but off it, he was constantly putting pressure on, on the Braga defence. He gave them an, a heck of a time, and I think the goal really, I think the goal sort of summed up everything that Rangers got right last night. Between, you know, Arebo sort of playing back to form, and as Kyle touched on it there, I mean, it, it sounds obvious, but if you play strikers, if you play a, a penalty box striker, that's what that's what he'll get you. That's not a criticism of somebody like Sakala. They just have different games. Roof has that sort of goal scoring mindset, I guess. He just knows what positions to get into. But yeah, he was just he was absolutely outstanding from from start to finish. And and I wouldn't necessarily say answered a lot of questions, but I think as a as a team, obviously we when we did the preview prior to the the leg in Portugal, we said, you know, Morelis is, is going to be a mess and, and I, I was a little bit worried from that point of view. But he's he's massively, massively stepped up and I'm sure we'll come to touch on it, but he's got another chance to do it in a couple of days, hopefully. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, that, that wasn't the last flashpoint in the game. <laughs> a couple of minutes later, um, Balogun's out in our right-back position. Clears the ball, a bit of a late tackle from the Braga player. A yellow card, nothing nothing more really in it. And then the Braga player just lost his head, I think is the, is the only way you can describe it. Um, and he kind of squared up. To the referee, you're not going to get away with that, especially against that referee, which who, who seemed quite pernickety about certain things, and then let a lot of fouls go and and that side of things. I think when they went down to nine men, I started to relax a wee bit, Kyle. I know that I know that you didn't, but really that that was that was our chance to to really see the game out. Yeah, I mean it's kind of crazy. I know you've touched on the referee there, but for me. He had a he had an awful game last night. I don't think he was brilliant at all. Really, um, there was a lot of fouls that I, I almost got the sense that he, he felt sorry for Braga a wee bit. I don't, I, you know that way when he was sort of gave the red card and he was trying to even it up. I don't know if there was a bit of that, but what that reaction to that yellow card from that Braga player is is insanity in a football pitch. I didn't actually again until I watched it back. I didn't actually realise how bad that was. I mean. I don't, I don't know why he would do that. He's just he's totally lost his head and, and you'd be human if that was a Rangers player. And I'm just glad, you know, it, was, it wasn't a great challenge on, on the guy by Balogun, but Balogun just sort of kept his head and, and walked away and, and dealt with it. And I think that's what frustrated them even more. But we're three one up at that point, 10 men. They've got 10 men. I mean, there's, there's nothing that's, it's, we've got it in, in the bag at that point. Yeah, Adam, we saw a few more substitutions come on. Um, Fashion Sakawa was one of those that came on. Scott Arfield as well. Um, Fashion Sakawa, I thought, actually did quite well when he came on. I think that, I suppose he's, he's playing against nine men, so you can't you can, you can really give too much credit for that one. But he was taking the ball and he was being really positive with it and he was creating chances and, and taking shots. Um, I think Scott Arfield had 10, 15 minutes to forget. Yeah, 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 he did. I think Sakala started doing well when Lundstrom. Uh, I don't really know what Lundstrom was saying. I certainly don't think Sakala could understand them. Um, <laughs> I think he, I think he started Sakala. He was trying to come and get the ball to feet, and it, which is just criminal because there's so much space to exploit, mm-hmm. and he's the one that's going to do it. 
So I think Lundstrom, <laughs> Lundstrom let him know that. Um, and then yeah, Scott Arfield was uh, yeah. I mean, it's there's there's not much to say on it really. It's a criminal mess. I mean, it's maybe bobbling slightly, but yeah, the, you won't want to watch that one back. The only thing I can think, not so much about the the mess, but playing against nine men is. I mean, you should never be getting beat against nine men, let alone conceding. But I don't know if like you never play them. You never play nine men ever. You occasionally play ten men. So maybe like even when Ryan Kent, see when he should have squared it across to Scott Wright, I don't know yeah. if he's cut that back because nine times out of ten, Scott Wright would never be that free. Yeah. So it's just like instinct to cut it back. And he plays that ball quite a lot. Yeah. So I think, yeah, it was obviously nervy with nine men, but I wouldn't say because Rangers weren't doing the right things. Yes, they should have been more clinical. They should have went four-one up, maybe even five. Um but I think it was just such a bizarre situation. And yeah, Kyle, when touching on the red card, it was, I mean, this literally the second that happened, I was like, oh, he's gone. I mean, he's yeah. so like in his face. It's it's, <laughs> I, it's madness. I mean, I don't know how you, and they've no really, at that point, they've not got anything to lose. I mean, they get beat four or five, one, who cares? You know, they may as well just go for it and try and get to pens. But yeah, you'd be, made it easier for Rangers. That's the main thing. Mm. Yeah, uh, so I think we've covered most of the, the instance from, uh, from an action-packed game. So Rangers run out 3-2 winners on aggregate, and that takes us into the Europa League semi-finals. I'm not sure we've said that quite enough yet. <laughs> um, so before we move on to, um, I think we're, we're taking on RB Leipzig in, in the next round. It's going to be a really, a really tough tie. I think it's safe to say Rangers are underdogs. But before we come to that, Kyle, I just wanted to touch on the importance of getting through that Braga tie and the fact that it means we're seeded in the Champions League um, qualifying rounds for the, for both stages next year should we finish second in the league. Yeah, it's it's huge. Anything that um, will make it uh, easier for us to get in the Champions League, uh, you know, it's important from a, a financial point of view from the club and um, and just just to be able to be in the, in the same uh, room as, as the big boys, you know, I, I, I would love to, you know, be in playing against the Real Madrid and stuff like that, but let's just, um, I think for the moment, I'm, I'm fully focused on this, uh, the road to Seville and, and, and looking forward to, to the Leipzig game, I think, I think we've got a cracking tie in our hands here. Yeah, Adam, Leipzig are one of the teams that dropped out of the Champions League, they were in Manchester City's group, I think two high-scoring games, if I remember mm-hmm. um, correctly, both Leipzig scoring two or three in both games, I think. So they're they're definitely a dangerous team. They're uh, currently fourth in the Bundesliga. Um, Dortmund are second, so some people might look at that and say, well, we've beaten the second place team, so we can beat the fourth place team. The Leipzig have beaten Dortmund 2-1 and 4-1 so far this season. So I think it's safe to say we're going in as underdogs. Yeah, 100%. It'll be interesting. I know that... Um... Sky shows the Bundesliga, so I'm going to try and catch some of the Leipzig games that I don't know a huge amount about them. I mean, just looking over the last few years, though, some of the players they've produced, you look at the likes of Timo Werner, who's at Chelsea now, and Kanate, who's at Liverpool, and I think their centre-half, Upa Meccano, is at Bayern Munich now. So, you know, they've got a history of producing, um, or a very recent history of producing really top-tier talent. So they'll be a very difficult group. I just actually, I'd seen someone this morning, yes, in 2022, it's like, 44 goals scored, 13 conceded, and eight clean sheets. So they've definitely got form going in there, um, and it'll be a big, big ask. But that you know, there's no reason that they can't do it. There's no reason any of those four teams now. I know it's a bit of a cliche, but at this point, there is absolutely no reason that West Ham, Frankfurt, Rangers, or RB Leipzig can't win it. They've got as much a chance of of anyone else. But yeah, RB Leipzig will still be the favourites in the in the tie. Yeah, Kyle, I think I read this morning that RB Leipzig have a turnover of £350 million plus a year. They um, sold £106 million pounds worth of players last summer um, and obviously rejuvenated their side, like Super Meccano, um, moving to Bayern Munich and uh, that side of things. Um, I think it's, it's a two-legged tie. We've seen with Dortmund already this season that, that we, can, we can match up to teams over, over that two-legged tie um, what I'm hoping f- um, it won't be is, is two nil-nils and an every penalty shootout like Fiorentina oh, was don't, don't say that to me I, you know I can barely watch penalties in the ground I don't know how I'd ever cope with a penalty shootout um, but uh, yeah you know it's it, it's all to play for I mean as you mentioned their, their budget 
this competition is not designed for teams like us to, to, to be in it and, and thrive in it, which just puts into even more perspective how much of an achievement this is. But for Rangers Football Club, um, but it, it's going it's going to be a great tie. You know, Adam touched on some of the some of the players that they've had going out in the past. It, uh, as it, and Kudu is up front for them at the moment. I think he scored a couple. Yeah, of, he scored a couple last night. Yeah, a couple of good goals for them. So, but the only thing I'll say about it is underestimate is it a peril. Dortmund did it, I think, in that first game. Um, you know, and, and teams have done it previously. I think Porto have done it before. Uh, uh, there is no reason why we can't go over there and, and, and get a result. Dio in, in Europe, I think, is is a lot more astute tactically. He seems to have it spot on. I mean, there's an argument, I suppose, with the last Braga game, but even if you look at the, you know, I thought this, the Slavia Prague game, uh, or Sparta Prague game, sorry, in, in his first game, I thought he was, he was brilliant in that. He came in and he did what he needed to do. And I think, you know, as Adam's touched on it, a lot of the players are really buy into this they, they see it as a as a as a totally separate entity and and there's not there's not really an awful lot of pressure on us and I think when there's no pressure on us I think that's when when we go out and, and perform and, and, and do our best. Yeah so we're looking ahead um just under two weeks from the point of recording until that first leg in Germany. Hopefully the fact that the second leg's at Ibrox will will work in our favour as well. Um and I Absolutely do not begrudge Rangers taking 55, 60 quid out of my bank account um, <laughs> for this game. So um, <laughs> so looking forward to that one. I think last night against Braga, when it went to extra time, quite a few fans will have turned their thoughts to Sunday and what impact is, is that going to have ahead of the Scottish Cup semi-final. So just looking ahead to that game, Adam, um, tiredness has to be a concern, right? Yeah, definitely. Um I mean, in terms of changes to the squad due to that, I don't know if maybe Ryan Jack will make it. Just because I know that in the past he's he's dropped out at the weekend after European games. Not always, but he has done. Um, but yeah, it's it's hard. You know, you never know. Maybe they'll sort of yes, it's um, tiredness will be a concern. But at the same time, winning a game in that manner when you concede quite late on not like sort of dying minutes, but then go into extra time and still get the job done. You know, you've got to take that as a positive. Yes, physically, it it will be tiring. There's absolutely no debate about that. But they've sort of won a game in a relatively hard way. So they have to try and look at it in a positive manner, I would say, or as positive as, as they can. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that. Kyle, one of the, the questions, I guess, with the quick turnaround is, do you, do you freshen up the team? Do you make any changes? For me, I don't think... I do make any changes unless they're they're enforced by injury. Um, how do you see the the starting eleven uh, coming together for for Sunday? And I wouldn't make any changes at all. I, I know obviously Adams touched on you know the tiredness aspect. I I, I don't think it's going to particularly play uh, as big a, a role in that game as is what everybody thinks in terms of. The, the game at Ibrox where, where we played Celtic, I, I thought they looked tired in, in the last sort of 15-20 minutes of that game as well. So I don't know if both teams will, will end up being like that. Um, I know there was a bit of a concern with uh, Barisic coming off, but after watching his um, post-match press conference, which <laughs> which was brilliant, um, you know, I think he he said himself it was just it was just cramps in his legs just because he's he's, he's not played for for so long. So I don't think it's a, a, a groin or a, or a muscle. Um, issue, but if if he's if we've got roof up front, he he's got to play because I know I know it's a cliche, but he's got a, that wand of a left foot and 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 we scored from it, um, created multiple chances, and I think that's the way we've got to got to play against them on Sunday. We've just got to go for it. Yeah, Adam, like Kyle said, I think with Kamara roof up front, uh, Borna Barisic offers a different dynamic to what Calvin Bassey does, um, in terms of the quality of his delivery, um. And, and the timing of his delivery as well. I think he's obviously he likes that one touch and then whip it into the box um, kind of mentality. Do you have any concerns of Barisic starting considering how he how he played at Parkhead in that early February game at all? Yeah, I think obviously he didn't play well. It's worth remembering that nobody played well that night. I think um, well until the boys that came on at half time did all right, um, but first half when they were up three 0 nobody played well. I think. For me, that game, you know, Celtic played well, they completely deserved to win. However, I think it had been sort of building and building. And at that point, Rangers were still sort of just winning games just. And I think the game was just a huge shock to the system. And that really showed with Barisic. I don't think it was necessarily 
as much as Barisic was getting caught, I remember the third goal, he was like in no man's land and I think it was a bad sneaks in behind him. But I wouldn't use that as a reason to not start him now. And I mean, the St Mirren game and, and last night, of course, show that he hopefully can take confidence from it. And it's a cup game as well. You know, it's a one-off game. Um, and I would definitely be starting him if, if he is fit because his, his quality is there for everyone to see and just hope that he can learn his lessons from, from last time. Yeah, I've got um, before we move on to one final point about the, the month of April and how that was kind of viewed before the month started I'm just going to get some quick score predictions uh, from you both, Kyle um, looking ahead to Sunday, what, how do you see the score panning out? I mean, it'll be another a tough game, but you know, I think hopefully some of the players will still be riding on a bit of a high from, from getting to the semi-finals of the Europa League um, and you know another massive semi-final at Hamden against your, your biggest rivals, I think we'll be up for it. I, I'm going to go for for 2-0. I, I just think if we turn in um, another performance like that, um, with, with the two sitting midfielders, I think that that's um, I think that'll um, work quite nicely against Celtic. Adam, what about yourself? Do you agree with Kyle and his confidence in 2-0? Yeah, I was going to say 2-1. Um, so I'll stick with that, I think. Um, yeah, as he says, hopefully they can just use Thursday as a, a high rather than to sort of focus on the tiredness aspect of it. And yeah, one-off game, big rivals. It's a, it's a huge opportunity for them. And they've obviously not won the Scottish Cup since about 2009. So I think that that would uh, could do with changing sooner rather than later. Yeah, I think I'm going to sit firmly on the fence and go for another extra time at least um, with a with a one each. I'm not sure Kyle can will be able to pack that <laughs> in the north stand. But... He's leaving at 90 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go for a 1-1 and, and into extra time and see what happens. Um, before we finish up, lads, just want to touch on um, April was obviously described as it's been a big month for Gio and the, the management team. I think it was... I think I was on a, a preview pod or a, a review pod with um, with Kieran and Crawford and Chris and kind of said that it could be the best month ever supporting Rangers and it could be the worst month ever supporting Rangers. I think we all kind of settled on it being somewhere somewhere in between. For what it looks like, that the league is probably beyond us at this stage. It's not mathematically beyond us, but just in terms of how the games pan out, I think think that one's gone. Um, we're into the Europa League semi-finals, as we've discussed at length here, which is fantastic. Okay, I'll come to you first. The uh, the game on Sunday against Celtic in the Scottish Cup semi-final, does that swing it one way or another um, for, for you in terms of it being a good month? Or does it does it impact your view of the management team at all, how the result goes on Sunday? Um, obviously, you, you, want, you want Gio to win. I, I mean, uh, I know there have been calls for him, uh, a, a lot of criticism, some of it maybe right, some of it maybe wrong, but um, it's we have to win on, on, on Sunday for, for this to be a, a successful month. I mean, any Rangers supporters, you want to win every, every competition that, that you play in and, and we've, we've got to be it. I mean, I, I, don't, I couldn't actually tell you that the last Rangers manager that will have lost our first three old firm games. Um, it's not, it's not good. But regardless of that, I, I think, I think you know my thoughts on it. I would still give Gio to till till the summer. But um, you know, I agree with you. I think the league is is all but done, and I, I can't, I can't, um, I can't see us um, getting back into it. But you know, it's not over until it's over. We've achieved getting into the semi finals of the Europa League, which which is huge. Um, but yeah, I think we've got to get into to a Scottish Cup semi final to consider this a sort of a successful ish season. Yeah, Adam, when I discussed with Kieran Crawford and Chris, um, kind of at the start of April, as to, as to what, how we viewed this season, I think the Scottish Cup semi final was the one that that everyone on that podcast was willing to let slide if we were still in the league and uh, league title race, and we were um, we were in the Europa League semi finals. Does it take on a new importance? on Sunday for us and for for how well the month has gone? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I, Kyle touched on it there. <clears throat> Excuse me. You want to win every game. You want to win every competition that you're in. That's just the nature of being at Rangers. I think in terms of my view on the management team, I would definitely be giving Gio a bit more time. 
um, regardless of what happens on Sunday. Unless he was to go out and get hammered, which I don't think is going to happen. Um, even though he's lost his first three old firms, I appreciate that is not good for a Rangers manager. It's not good at all. But I just think that in Europe, he's just showing that he's really got something about him. And you would hope, weirdly, in a similar way to Gerard, although they took over two very different teams, I think Gerard bought himself a bit of time with his European performances. Mm. Because, I mean, they weren't that. I mean, they were nowhere near leagues the first two seasons, really. Um, certainly not by the time it got to, to this stage of the year. Um, yes, obviously, it would be disappointing. And then you are putting all your eggs in one basket with the most, with the most difficult competition that you're in, yeah. in sort of typical Rangers <laughs> fashion. Um, so, yes... I think it's a huge game, but if they were to lose it, I don't think it should be catastrophic to what we make of Giovanni Van Bronckhorst. I would definitely be giving him a bit more time. I mean, I would be giving him past the summer because I don't see the point. He's still a new manager. He's clearly got a new way of playing. I think the squad is in need of a bit of refreshing. And yeah, you've, you've just got to give folk time. I know you don't really get it as Rangers manager. You don't really get it as any manager. Um but yeah, hope, hopefully they can get the job done and, and he'll give himself two shots at competitions. Like you say, the league, the league probably is done. I mean, it's not done till it's, it's not over till it's over, as Kyle said, but it, you know, Celtic are far and away the favourites for it. Yeah, Kyle, okay, well, just one last point before we before we finish up. Um, I think G, I think I agree with Adam. I think Giovanni Van Bronckhorst has to be given a summer. Um, he's still playing with, with Gerard's squad. We made a couple of additions in Ramsey and uh, Diallo and uh, Zukowski. Surprised I remembered his name to be honest. <laughs> um, but um, so those three came in in January, but not setting the header alight by any stretch of the imagination. I think, I think he has to be given the summer, surely. Yeah, he's he's got to be. I mean, I've been quite vocal in in, in the group chat about it. He's got to be given time to 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 bring in his own players. Um, I think we're in agreement. I think there will be quite a few um, bodies going in and bodies going out. Um, in the summer, and uh, you know, you've got Roy Mackay, Dave Voss, you know, <laughs> who worked at Ajax. They've got to be given a chance to, to implement what, what the system, the style. You know, we've seen it. It's a criticism I've seen is uh, getting liable at Geo is, is what's what's our style? What 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 you know? What how do we play? And it's I think the answer to that is we play to suit the the, the frailties and, and and the weaknesses and, and the opposition. I think that's. That's very much the, the Dutch sort of management style as we go. How are the opposition playing and how can we play to, 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 to expose those weaknesses? And I think we see we saw it last night. <laughs> you know, I think that was a perfect example of it being executed perfectly. So, yeah, it, it's got to be given time. For me, there's no question about it. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that. OK, I think we've this is one of the longer pods um, that we've done, but obviously plenty to talk about and a, a great night at Ibrox to talk about. Adam, thank you very much for joining us. Pleasure. Thanks for having me. Kyle, same to you. Is it, are you not sick of me by now? <laughs> not quite yet. <laughs> 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 uh, but we're almost there. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for listening. All that's left for me to do is ask you to like the video, um, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you'll get. Uh, make sure you turn on notifications as well, and you'll get an email every time a new video from TII is uploaded to our YouTube channel. Until next time, thank you very much and goodbye.